Welcome to Mayo Clinic q and I'm Dr. Sanj Kakar. Our best defense against the spread of coronavirus is hand washing, but frequent hand washing can take its toll by depleting the skin of its natural moisture and oils. What should you do if your skin becomes dry or sensitive? Joining us to discuss is Mayo Clinic dermatologist, Dr. Dawn Davis. Dr. Davis, welcome to the program. Hi, Dr. Kakar. It's great to be here. Nice to see you. It's good. It's nice to see you. So let's talk about hand washing. Obviously, we hear a lot about it. How how should we do this properly? So the first thing I want to reassure people is that it is not surprising and not uncommon that the skin could become dry and more irritated with increased hand washing. A lot of people have been asking dermatologists if that means something is wrong, bad, or different with their skin. And the answer is no. The skin makes its own natural oils and proteins and has its own moisturization process that keeps the skin moist on a regular day-to-day basis. But when hand washing increases due to things such as COVID-19, it's understandable and expected that the skin could become dry and irritated. So I just want to reassure the public it doesn't necessarily mean anything is wrong or bad. So in terms of when you are washing your hands, should you use soap? Should you use bar of soap? Or if you pump the soap out, is there any difference there? We should definitely still be washing our hands and we should most definitely use soap. If you only use water, you only get off a certain amount of germs that stay on the skin or that shed with the dead skin that is shedding with your vigorous rubbing of the washing. So most definitely please do not refrain from washing or refrain from using soap during this time. Soap is very imperative. Now it's most ideal to use a soap that is hypoallergenic, free of irritants and perfumes and other sorts of fun accessories like glitter and sparkles. (laughs) Um, And oftentimes the easiest way to get hypoallergenic soap is in bar form because it tends to have in general less chemicals and more moisture content. However, there are some liquids and foams over the counter that are readily used as soaps that also are more hypoallergenic. So I would encourage you to simply look for uh, an allergen free moisturizing soap and use what is readily available for you. So you've taken some of the fun away there. Children don't like to wash their hands, so we can't use glitter soap. So is there a little- I know you might like glitter soap too. But is there a simple uh, trick that you can do when you're washing your hands in terms of how long you should be washing them for? Absolutely. So it's hard to think of 20 seconds. We like to wash our hands in warm water. Doesn't have to be scalding hot, but preferably comfortably warm, which remember for young children is cooler than it is for adults because children cannot tolerate as warm a temperatures Mm. as adults can. And so warm water relative to the person whether that be in a child or an adult. And we like to wash for 20 seconds, which for adults can seem like a very long time and for children seems like an eternity. So the best thing to do when washing your hands is to sing a song out loud or in your head to ensure that you've washed enough for 20 seconds. For children, I like to recommend having fun singing the ABCs or perhaps the happy birthday song. For adults, um, I, I like to tease that you can sing your favorite 1980s love ballad, which we all know those big hair band songs lasted much longer than 20 seconds. And if you want to feel patriotic during our public health initiative of COVID, it's always appropriate to sing the national anthem while you wash. So what's your song then, Dr. Davis? So I like big hair bands. I, I can't uh, <laughs> d- deny. I've been doing some John Bon Jovi and some Journey in my head, and sometimes out loud if no one else is around. <laughs> So we, we've talked about using soap, but what, but what about hand sanitizers or even those uh, disinfectant wipes? Do they substitute for soap and water? Hand sanitizer and wipes are de- definitely better than not doing anything at all. Um, hand sanitizers are thought to be um, almost as effective as soap and water. So- soap and water is definitely preferred, mm-hmm. and it is especially preferred after particular activities, for example, using the restroom. And it's also preferred before eating and after eating. You mentioned uh, about uh, regularly washing your hands and it can take a toll on the skin. Uh, you know, you remove the natural moisturizer. And so what should one do, if this, especially if the hands become dry? Let's talk about that for a moment. When we wash our hands, make sure that you're scrubbing between the digits, between your fingers, and also getting all the way down to the wrists. Don't forget that the wrists are often involved in all the same things that the hands are. 
And I know as an orthopedic hand surgeon with an expertise in the wrist, you're probably very um, <laughs> engaged in that passion as well, Dr. Katkar. So don't forget the wrists and don't forget in between the digits. So when we rinse, we want to make sure that we're rinsing off not just the, the basic general parts of our hands that we think of, but that we're also paying attention attention to rinsing between the fingers and also on the wrist, particularly the backs of the wrist. Mm. A lot of times people forget about that. And then what happens is soap residue stays between the digits or lies on the backs of the wrists. And then people over time will get an irritant dermatitis from the soap residue that's there. And for little kids, especially, it kind of can start to feel sticky. And people might think that the skin is dirty when it's not really dirty, it's simply soap residue. And then when we dry our hands, let's make sure that we're gentle to our skin. We can use a paper towel if we'd like, but that can be abrasive. So since we're doing a lot of frequent hand washing, it's important to pat dry instead of scrub dry. And I would suggest using a linen, such as a cotton towel, over a paper towel. But using a paper towel or a cotton linen is much more preferable to letting the hands air dry as air drying only lets the skin dry out more due to diffusion and evaporation mm -hmm. of moisture off the skin. And then if you shake your hands dry, first of all, you might um, make other people wet around you or contaminate surfaces. And then if you happen to have any sort of germs left on your skin accidentally, the vigorous shaking can cause the germs to distribute. So we wanna make sure that we rinse well and are attentive to rinsing. And then we wanna make sure that we're gentle with our drying, patting dry. When we use our cotton linens, we wanna make sure that because we're washing all the time, that we don't keep our cotton linens around um, much, that we change them often, mostly daily, especially in high frequency use places like the kitchen and the bathrooms, and then perhaps every other day in areas of your home uh, where you might not use it that often. So we need to change our linens much more than we think we do. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned about air drying because it's one of those contradictions in terms when you wash your hands, you don't want to touch anything in case you pick something up. And so you're right. trying to air dry it. But as you've told us and educated us, that is not as effective as actually patting them down and drying them. But afterwards, your hands become sore. Uh, so, so what should we be doing uh, in terms of moisturizing our hands, especially with people, for example, who have eczema uh, and other skin conditions where their hands are, are drier than normal? Now is a great time to get into the habit of moisturizing the skin, including your hands. Um, always remember that moisturization is good for the skin. Your skin is sort of like a kitchen sponge. And over time, with repetitive washing and using it with use, it will simply dry out and look like a dry kitchen sponge. And so when you wash your hands and pat dry, you do allow some moisture back into the skin. And then we like to trap that moisture by putting on a moisturizer, which allows it to be kind of like a happy moist kitchen sponge. And there are multiple ways to do that. You can do that with lotion, with creams, or with ointments. And they are slightly different from one another. Lotions tend to be the weakest of the three, if you will, with regards to moisturization because it has more water content. Um, and so it goes into the skin quite well. It tends to be thinner, but it will evaporate faster. Creams are like lotion, but have less water content. So they tend to be thicker and they tend to take a longer time to absorb into the skin, but then they tend to stay longer and evaporate more slowly over time. Ointments purely sit on top of the skin. So you can think of them like a greenhouse roof or like a lid. And what they do is they, simply, they essentially just prevent or slow the evaporation that naturally happens off of the skin. So you're just giving the skin time to catch up with its own self humidification. But because you're washing often, that's going to take a lot of time for the skin to catch up with itself. So based on those principles, what I like to suggest is once your hands are clean, apply an allergen free or hypoallergenic lotion or cream to the skin, rub it in nice and gently, making sure to get between the digits and include the wrists. If you don't feel that your hands are moist enough, simply wait 30 seconds to a minute, another chance to sing a 1980s love ballad to yourself, <laughs> and then simply reapply again. Um, we don't think about reapplying lotion twice because we usually don't do a lot of other grooming things twice, like brushing our teeth, for example, or trimming our nails. But with regards to moisturization, you definitely get benefit from a second application. So simply apply again and repeat. If you'd like to go a step further because you think your skin needs more help, 
you could apply a cream or a lotion first, and then on your second application, use an ointment on top to seal it in like a roof. And, and that allows sort of a greenhouse effect, if you will. Now, this is wonderful advice, uh, but there are patients out there who have dermatological conditions and right. this is flaring up their condition. So if they're trying that and they're still uh, having flares, uh, are you seeing this in your clinic? And uh, what are your message to these patients? So we're seeing patients who have sensitive skin having flares and dermatitis flares. We're also seeing patients who didn't know that they were sensitive skin now uh, having flares <laughs> now that their um, skin is being challenged, if you will. So there's sort of a three-step process in my mind of how to go above and beyond the general moisturization. So the first tip for the, the first step would be that at night, or if you're gonna be home during the day for a prolonged period of time and not washing your hands as often, because you're gonna sit and watch a movie or something, what you could do is simply put a single or a double layer of lotion or cream on, like we talked about previously. Then you can cover in an ointment, the most common ointment to use is readily available petroleum jelly over the counter. And then what you can do is simply put a cotton sock or a glove, but I think socks are more practical, over your hands and wrists um, and walk around with, hand, with socks on your hands or go to sleep with socks on your hands. You may pull them off in the middle of the night, but that is a very easy and straightforward way to um, cause a greenhouse trapping of moisture into your skin and I think you'll find that your skin gets much better that way and then don't forget of course to launder the socks. <laughs> there you go your innovation speaks uh, once again. Uh, but we've I'm been all about clean laundry can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> now, now we've been talking about hands but now obviously people are wearing more and more masks um, yes. and it can rub against the bridge of their nose or their, their ears. Uh, are you seeing this as a, as a phenomenon and patients complaining of this? Yes, absolutely. People are using the masks. Uh, they're getting friction and irritation across their nasal bridge. They're getting friction behind their ears, perhaps under their chin. And people that happens, one, because of natural wear, but also because they're wearing the masks very tightly, which is well-intentioned, but can strangulate the skin. So not just friction and dermatitis, but also bruising. So the first step for mask use and sensitive skin you know, you can wash your face, you can apply moisturizer that's made for faces that's hypoallergenic as if you were a woman putting on her makeup. Um, moisturization, moisturizers do come for the face for gentlemen too and in unscented forms. <laughs> um, and then what I'd recommend is that you take some zinc oxide. Zinc oxide is the white hypoallergenic chemical that's an unscented diaper paste like A and D ointment and things like that. And it's readily available over the counter and it's very inexpensive. And it has very nice um, anti-inflammatory properties. And what you can simply do is pretend that you're a, a 1970s lifeguard and put a thin layer of the unscented zinc oxide across your nasal bridge, behind your ears, or under your chin in places where the mask will rub, and then apply your mask. And that serves as a nice barrier to the friction without impacting um, or you know, decreasing the effectiveness of the mask. And then when you take the mask off, once you get home, um, you can wash and then moisturize again. So that would be the first step for the hands and the first step for the face. A lot of these masks are surgical masks in the hospital, but now the public are making their own masks. Yeah. Um, do you, are there certain materials that you think are kinder to the skin uh, yeah. compared to others that are more abrasive? Yes, absolutely. So according to the CDC, they prefer a tight weave cotton mask, although, um, any sort of mask is better than no mask at all. So if you don't have an extra bed sheet or pillowcase that you can use, uh, consider using a bandana. If you don't have a bandana, then perhaps a cotton towel, like a hand towel um, or even a scarf, although those have uh, less tight weaves. Personally, what I suggest to my patients is if you have an extra pillowcase laying around, you will mm. also often note that at the end of the pillowcase, the cotton material is folded over and sewn shut such that it's a double layer of cloth. And if you can trim off the edge of the pillowcase that has that border and sew it side to side, you've given yourself a four layered tight weave cotton mask that's soft because we use it as a bed sheet. And then you can simply sew or clip hair bands if you'd like or cotton strings from the remaining part of the pillowcase 
to this rectangular square that you've made out of the, the pillowcase trim. And that serves as a very nice, soft, cotton tight weave mask. Thank you for giving me the permission for now allowing my children to take scissors and cut the pillowcases. Uh, I can just uh, tell them that it's of the advice of Dr. Davis. That's right. So if, uh, if your wife gets disappointed, I guess it's just a, a nice excuse to eventually get some new linens. <laughs> We've been talking about the importance of moisturizing the hands, uh, and usually that's enough, but some patients, they will have flares of their dermatitis and they need to do something else. What, what is your advice, especially for the hands? Absolutely, Dr. Kakar. So if you've tried the layered moisturization and ointment with the cotton sock um, example, and that isn't enough help, what I'd recommend is kicking it up a notch to something that in dermatology we call a wet dressing. Um, with my patients, I nickname it the medical burrito or the skin burrito. And it sounds quite complicated, but actually it's quite straightforward and you can do it very easily with things that you have at home. So the first thing that you'll do is you'll wash your hands after you've, um, when you're ready for bed or in the morning when you rise and you'll pat dry gently as we've discussed before. Then what I want you to do is put on two thick layers back to back of your thickest, most effective hypoallergenic lotion or cream that you have all the way down to the wrists. And I want it to be so thick that you can see like a, some white residue as if it were cake icing on a cupcake or a brownie or something like that. It probably won't be terribly thick, but I want you to definitely see residue of the cream sitting on top of your skin. Then once you've done that, I want you to take an eight ounce glass of warm water, not hot, but warm, and put into it a, a teaspoon of white vinegar from your kitchen and mm. stir it into that cup. So you can put it in a bowl or a cup, stir it into the bowl or the cup, the white vinegar, and then take two washcloths that are clean, dip them into the bowl or the cup of the vinegar water, pull them out, twist them so that they're, wring them out so that they're wet, but not dripping all over everywhere, and simply roll that vinegar, wet, warm washcloth over your hands, and then place your tube sock on top. And what the warm water and vinegar soap does is it adds more moisture to that greenhouse effect. The vinegar helps adjust the pH, which keeps the skin clean. The heat or the warmth allows the pores to open up and allows the extra lotion that you've applied to soak deeper into the skin more effectively. And then you simply allow that wet dressing, if you will, or my nickname, the hand burrito, uh, to be placed on overnight if you're sleeping or for an hour uh, during the daytime when you're awake. And you can do this two to three times a day. You can do it morning, after a lunch meal, for example, or in the afternoon, and then of course before bed. And a lot of people find that if simple sock coverage does not help, that kicking it up a notch with moisturization and a vinegar soak um, helps definitively. Oh, I wanna okay. make sure that we tell the public to remember ointments do not work under wet dressings. They don't absorb into the skin. So if you try this with petroleum jelly or um, a moisturizer that is mostly ointment based, you'll just become frustrated. So make sure that it's a cream or a lotion. And then lastly, I'd like to remind people you can do something similar if you're having mask irritation. So after you've washed and pat dried, um, what you can do is simply apply the lotion twice to your face or the cream, leaving a nice thick layer, and then do the same vinegar soak with the washcloth, and then simply lay it across your face in the areas that are irritated for about 15 minutes and repeat that two to three times a day and you'll find that that humidification method is very helpful to the face. Some wonderful pearls there, Dr. Davis. Thank you so much for joining us today. We've yeah. had the honor and privilege to be talking to Dr. Uh, Dawn Davis, Mayo Clinic Dermatologist. Thank you so much, Dr. Davis. My pleasure, Dr. Kakar. And please remember that if patients have trouble beyond these uh, at-home remedies, we're happy to take care of them in dermatology or primary care. Please contact your, your local provider. We're here to help. Mayo Clinic Q&A is a production of the Mayo Clinic News Network and is available wherever you get and subscribe to your favorite podcasts. To see a list of all Mayo Clinic podcasts, visit newsnetwork.mayoclinic.org. Then click on podcasts. Thanks for listening and be well. We hope you'll offer a review of this and other episodes when the option is available. Comments and questions can also be sent to Mayo Clinic News Network at mayo.edu.